You're good to go, Sergeant Lugo. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the subcommittee on landmarks, public sighting, and disposition. At this time, we ask that council members and council staff please turn on their video. Please silence all cell phone and electronic devices. Thank you for, for your cooperation. We'll begin momentarily. Council Member Koo, before you begin, I see that Council Member Kalos uh, has a question. You may recognize Council Member Kalos. Thank you. Yeah. Council, Ma Council Member Kalos, you have a question before we start? Or? I had just raised my hand to make remarks in support of one of the applications. Oh, that's we, we so have... uh, later on, yeah. Okay. Shall we begin? Free to begin, Chair uh, Good morning, I'm Council Member Peter Ku. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. Chair Adams is unable to be here this morning, so I will be serving as acting chair. I'm joined by Council Member Kalos, uh, Kalos, uh, Rosenthal, Miller, Barron, and Council Member Traeger. A quorum being present, we will begin today's meeting by voting on three HPD projects that we heard at our May 7 meeting. After we vote, we will proceed to today's public hearing on LU-2274, Adam Clayton Power, ANCP, for property in Manhattan. Before we, we begin, I recognize the subcommittee council to review the remote hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Ku. I am Jeffrey Campagna, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov to sign up now. Only register if you intend to testify on 2274 Adam Clayton Powell ANCP. The hearings on other matters on our calendar were closed on May 7th. If you're a member of the public who wants to watch this hearing, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized by the chair to testify. The chair will recognize the applicant panel as a group. The chair will recognize members of the public one at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your mic will be unmuted. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Each member of the public will have two minutes to testify. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony you would like to submit in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, you can email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions of witnesses should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Ku will then recognize members to speak. Lastly, as we continue to adjust to hosting public hearings via webinar, there may be extended pauses as we can encounter technical delays. We ask that you please be patient as we work through the new format. Chair Ku will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. We will now vote on three projects we heard at our May 7 meeting. We will vote to approve LU 659, the 311 to 313 Pleasant Avenue cluster, an application submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the private housing finance law, requesting approval of an urban development action area project and an exemption from real property tax 
for, for property located in Manhattan at 311 through 313 Pleasant Avenue, 51 through 55 East 129th Street, and, one, and 1263 Park Avenue. The properties are located in council districts represented by council member Kalos, Ayala, and Perkins. I now recognize council member Kalos to offer remarks. Thank you, uh, Chair Ku. I'm council member Ben Kalos. As always, you can uh, reach me on social media at Ben Kalos. I'm here today to lend my support to the 311-313 Pleasant Avenue cluster. Uh, one of the buildings is 1263 Park Avenue, which is in my district in East Harlem. Uh, 1263 Park Avenue went through closure in 1978 and entered the TIL program in 1998, the tenant, tenant interim lease program. Since this time, the building as residents have complied with the requirements of the TIL program and the building now needs substantial rehabilitation. The proposed Affordable Neighborhoods Cooperative Program will ensure this rehab happens while preserving the much needed affordable housing for those residents. Under substantial rehabilitation, the construction work will consist of structural joist replacements, electrical upgrades, placement of building systems, including new windows, new roofs, plumbing upgrades, installation of new boilers. The scope of work will also include new bathrooms, kitchens, entry doors, mason work, new flooring, new mailboxes, hallway upgrades, bi-level lighting, painting, asbestos, and lead removal. I'm most concerned about those last pieces. At construction loan closing, the building will be contained conveyed to the Restoring Communities HDFC while the property and tenant management responsibilities will be transferred to the designated developer, Banana Kelly, uh, who we are all big fans on in the council. Following construction completion, Restoring Communities HDFC will convey the property to the Cooperative Housing Development Fund corporations formed by the new building's tenants. The existing tenants will become shareholders and will pay $2,500 per apartment with a monthly maintenance at 41% of AMI, that equates to $1,006 per month per two bedroom unit. 1263 Park Avenue currently has 10 units, eight of which are occupied. The total vacancy units will be sold for a price affordable to families at 165% of AMI. During the previous hearing, we received assurance from HPD that folks would be able to access these units publicly through the Housing Connect uh, portal, part of Local Law 64, which I authored. Uh, so if you're watching right now and you're interested in a co-op uh, at 1263 Park Avenue, we've got them. Uh, and in a couple of months, you should be able to apply. Uh, and we've worked with the tenants. We have connected with them. We have spoken to Banana Kelly. We have spoken to the uh, tenant association leader and co current co-op board president. Uh, and they are very excited. They look forward to the smooth process and are anxious for this to be completed. I'd like to thank the members of the 1263 Park Avenue Tenants Association, their president, Ronald Stewart, for engaging this project and for communicating with my office. I'd like to thank the, uh, H the city council staff who worked on this project, the HPD staff who works with us, connecting us with the community, as well as Wilfredo Lopez from my office. I urge all the committee members to please vote in favor of this uh, affordable housing in my district. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. We will also vote to approve LU-660, the Union Avenue cluster, an application submitted by HPD requesting approval of an urban development action area project and an exemption from real property tax to facilitate the preservation of four buildings and 69 units of affordable home ownership in properties located at 774, 993, and 995 Union Avenue, and 1042 Longfellow Avenue in Chess Salamanca's district in the Bronx. Lastly, we will vote to approve LU661 and P consider LU662, both related to the 266 West 96th Street project. LU661 and be considered LU662 are applications submitted by HPD pursuant to session 197-C of the New York City Charter and session 576A2 
of the New York State Private Housing Finance Law, respectively. Each requests approval for the disposition of city-owned property located at 266 West 96th Street in Manhattan to facilitate the development of a 23-story mixed-use building containing residential and community facility uses in Councilmember Rosendorf's district in Manhattan. Thanks to Councilmember Rosendorf's hard work, the developer has agreed to modify the unit mix so that four units that were originally earmarked for 120% AMI are now earmarked for just 67% AMI. For a total of 11 units at 27% AMI, 11 at 67% AMI, and 15 at 77%, 31 at 120%, and 103 at market rate. I now recognize Councilmember Rosenthal to offer remarks. Thank you, uh, Council Member Ku, and thank you for describing the project. Um, I asked my colleagues to support this project um, because I think uh, it's as good as we're going to get. Um, I have watched this property now for about 25 years. Um, the uh, current borough president, then council member Gail Brewer, tried very hard to uh, find a way to dispose of this um, MTA uh, substation at 226, um, 266 West 96th Street um, about 10 years ago. Uh, it's a brownfield site and it is going to require remediation work. Uh, the way that, and it's been very frustrating to have that property uh, not have anything but an eyesore there uh, for the community. So um, this applicant came in and has done some uh, clever work by purchasing the property next door and with the combined property is able to build um, within uh, guidelines, uh, 23 stories, which is contextual. And um, the number of affordable that would be required um, by a uh, combination of MIH, CQA, and some other financing would normally be 20% of the property. Um, he has offered up 40% uh, to be affordable. Um, now, it's not perfect. We would love for it to be 50% because in a square footage basis, uh, mm -hmm. the property itself is 50% um, city owned and 50% uh, his purchase property. But I think um, uh, we've looked at the numbers, we've looked at the math. I do think that um, given the cost of remediation that the 40% number is fair for affordable. Then you have the mix of affordability. Um, you know, he's met the requirement of the 15% uh, set aside for formerly homeless families. Um, and he's agreed to increase, as the chair said, the number that are at 67% uh, AMI. In my community, uh, there are two sets of population that are going to benefit by the affordable units. Many people come into my office and will meet the need units at 27% AMI, the 67%, and to some degree, the 77%. For the 120%, for the 31 units at 120% AMI, I've been convinced by the by HPD, and I want to thank and give a shout out to Sarah Mallory here, um, that units at that level, 120% uh, AMI, will uh, will be sought after. 
by a certain segment of the population. Um, and those units, as the developer has agreed, all of the affordable units will be affordable into perpetuity, um, which I think is terrific. Uh, and um, with that, I wanna thank the developer for finding a way to develop this property, something that hadn't been figured out for so many years. We're now gonna have a property that um, can be integrated into that section of the district. And I'm very pleased about that. I really wanna thank our land use team, Andrew Lassiter in particular, who shepherded this project and, and kept me apprised. And you know, I followed his very good advice throughout. Um, and of course, my team in particular, Marisa Mock, my chief of staff, who really had very wise counsel during this entire process. So with that, I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Walsendahl. With all council members representing affected districts expressing their support for these applications, we will now vote to approve LUs 659, 660, 661, MP consider LU 662. Council, please call the vote. Chair Ku. I vote aye. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. May I be ex excused to explain my vote? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of LU 661 and 662. Uh, I do understand that there was an adjustment made and four units were removed from 120% of the AMI grouping into the 67% AMI grouping. And that's well and good. Uh, I don't know, the city has always said that 120% of the AMI is affordable. And I don't recall the exact percentage of New York City residents who are at 120% of the AMI, but it's not in my calculation, an affordable uh, rent for people who are at 100, I think 120% translates to about $112,000 annually. So for my estimation, the 27, the 67 and the 77% are yes, affordable. And that's a total of 37 units out of the 100 and 70 units in the total development. I don't think that that's a good representation to say that we will be able to call these units affordable beyond that. And I also noted that the three bedroom units are not included in any of the affordable, but only in the market rate, the market rate apartments, which total market rate is 103 units. So for that reason, I am not voting in support of LU 661 or 662. Thank you very much. Councilman Miller. Permission to explain my vote. <clears throat> Permission granted, thank you. Yeah, thank you, ahead. Chair uh, First of all, I wanna send my condolences to Chair Adams on the passing of, of her father. And certainly she would be here representing this committee always and with the dignity and respect uh, that it deserves. So my condolences to Chair Adams. Um, you know, we, th there's been a lot of, this has been a topic of a lot of conversations and we've, we've had a lot of conversations uh, in, 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 the uh, in between the previous hearing and, and today about this. One of my concerns is, is the lack of savings and, 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 and wealth building in the black and brown community. And we've always saw uh, home ownership, or, or even in this case, cooperatives uh, as, as an opportunity to do so. And as we, as, as we all know, the recent data says that in the next decade, we'd probably be at net zero in those communities in terms of wealth and savings. Um, I'm not sure that any of this really contributes or helps in us in mitigating those circumstances. And it is always my goal when we do projects like this to first and foremost, to be able to save and, and create wealth for, for these communities. Um, secondly, um, I have a concern about the equity of, 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 of the subsidies that are being delivered to these projects 
um, in, in, in our tax and our city dollars um, as, as there are nearly, uh, some of the projects are, are nearly identical, but the cost and the amount of investment versus downtown versus uptown or the South Bronx. And, and so whether it is, it is, whether it is uh, Jamaica or, or the South Bronx or, or East Harlem or West Side, or, and uh, it should be all equitable. The investment that, that we make and the investments that we make um, should, should really uh, uh, benefit um, the city and, and the folks who, who, who need it the most. So I, I'm, I'm very much concerned, but I am convinced um, that these affordable opportunities are paramount to achieving those goals of, of not just equity, uh, but for communities of color to, to save and, and develop wealth. So um, with, with that, uh, I, I will be voting aye on all, but very, very strong uh, concerns about uh, Park Avenue and AMIs and um, the amount of equity or lack thereof in, in, in the services and the, the subsidies that are going in. I vote aye. Council Member Traeger. Vote aye. Items L, LU items 659 and 660 are approved by a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, and are recommended to full land use committee. Items LU, uh, LU 661 and 662 are approved by a vote of three in the affirmative, uh, with uh, one in the negative and zero abstentions, and are likewise recommended to the full land use committee. Thank you, Council. I now open the public hearing on P. Consider LU 2020 HAM. The 2274 Adam Clayton Powell ANCP. This application was submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to Article 16 of the Journal Municipal Law and Session 577 of Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for approval of an urban development action area project, waiver of the area destination requirement, waiver of the requirements of Session 197-C and 197-D of the New York City Charter and approval for a real property tax exemption for property located at 24 West 132nd Street, 37 West 138th Street, and 202 West 133rd Street. 2274 Adam Clayton Power Jr. Bolivar in the borough of Manhattan in the council district represented by council member Perkins. Council, please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel for this item is Sarah Mallory and Christine O'Connell on behalf of HPD and Donald Notice and Seda Walls, Charles on behalf of the sponsor West Harlem Group Assistance. Council, please administer the affirmation. Are all applicants on video? I don't see Donald notice. Please unmute Donald notice. I see you. Uh, panelists, please raise your right hands and unmute yourselves or we will unmute you rather. Please unmute Donald Notice. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer all, to all council member questions? I do. Yes. I do.
Thank you. Before you begin, please state your name and affiliation for the record. You may begin. Great. I thank you so much, uh, Chair Ku. My name is Sarah Mallory, and I'm here on behalf of HPD. Okay. This week, oh, oh thanks. I'm sorry. I'm Christine O'Connell. I'm the director of ANCP with HPD. Donald Notice, the executive director for West Harlem Group Assistance. Saida Walls Charles, I am also representing West Harlem Group Assistance. Great, and I'll go ahead and read a quick statement for the record. This pre-considered land use item consists of the proposed disposition of four partially occupied city-owned buildings and the approval of Article 11 tax benefits for properties located at 24 West 132nd Street, Block 1729, Lot 45. 37 West 138th Street, Block 1736, Lot 23. 202 West 133rd Street, Block 1938, Lot 38. And 2274 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, Block 1939, Lot 34 in Manhattan Council District 9. Known as the 2274 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard ANCP Cluster, the buildings will be developed through HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program. Under the program guidelines, city-owned multiple dwellings are conveyed to restoring communities, HDFC, for $1 per tax lot, and then rehabilitated by private developers selected through a competitive process. The developer will sign a site development and management agreement with restoring communities that will be in effect until co-op conversion occurs and title transfers from restoring communities, HDFC, to the individual cooperative. From the time of the cooperative conversion, the developer will remain the property manager for at least one year. After the first year, the co-op will have the choice of keeping the developer as property manager or hire a new company approved by HPD. All of the buildings entered into city ownership through an in-rem foreclosure process. 24 West 132nd Street entered into city ownership in 1987 and joined the tenant interim lease program in 2001. 37 West 138th Street became city owned 1990. 1977 and joined the TIL program in 2002. 202 West 133rd Street became city owned in 1993 and joined the TIL program in 2002. And 2274 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard became city owned in 1987 and joined the TIL program in 1997. As part of the TIL program, tenants are required to form tenant associations to self-manage their buildings, which includes collecting rents under a net lease agreement with HPD. The cluster comprises 60 units. Currently, there are 36 occupancies and those tenants are ready and these tenants are ready to move forward with the next steps in cooperative conversion under HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, also known as ANCP. The designated developer, West Harlem Group Assistance, has been selected to develop this site. The four buildings in this cluster will require a substantial rehabilitation that includes structural joist replacement replacement of building systems, including electrical upgrades, plumbing upgrades, and the installation of new boilers. Additionally, work to the envelope of the building is needed, including new windows, new roofs, and masonry repair. The scope of work also includes new bathrooms and kitchen fixtures, entry doors, new flooring, new mailboxes, and hallway upgrades, painting, and asbestos and lead removal. Some unit layout changes will be required in order to comply with current 2014 building code and handicap accessibility requirements. Additionally, 5% of the units will be renovated with accessibility for mobility and 2% for hearing and visually impaired households. Post rehab, the Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard cluster will have a total of 60 residential units. There will be various mixture types, including two studios, 39 one bedrooms, 17 two bedrooms, and one three bedroom and one four bedroom apartment. Of the total unit count, 36 are occupied by returning shareholders. Household incomes for existing tenants ranges between a reported 3% to 88% of AMI, and the cooperative interests attributable to occupied apartments will be sold to the existing tenants for $2,500. Maintenance is set at 40% AMI for existing tenants. New purchasers will also pay 40% AMI for their maintenance in addition to their mortgage that is set by the unit sales price of 80% AMI. In the rental fallback scenario, insiders will pay, those in the building will pay 44% AMI, while those new to the building will pay 85% AMI. The monthly rent for each unit size for existing tenants is anticipated to be 
$746 per studio, $801 per one bedroom, $976 per two bedroom, $1,122 per three bedroom, and $1,257 per four bedroom apartment. The cooperative interest attributable to vacant apartments will be sold for a price affordable to families earning no more than 80% of the area median income. In addition to seeking disposition approval for 2274 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, HPD requests a 40-year Article 11 tax exemption in order to help the shareholders maintain affordability. The term of the tax exemption will be coterminous with the regulatory agreement, and the total tax benefit is approximately $9,356,150, with a net present value of $2,613,839. In order to facilitate development of the Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard ANCP cluster, HPD seeks approval of this pre-considered land use item. Thank you so much. The next speaker, please. Are there any other members of the panel who have uh, remarks? I, I can have, I can make some. Good, good morning, everybody. Um, I'll, I'll give a, a brief up, uh, update on the um, organization and what West Harlem does and how it, and uh, um, our work in home ownership. We, we're celebrating our 49th um, year in developing affordable housing in, in, in Harlem. The organization has developed 1,600 units of affordable housing, of which 200 units was um, home ownership, and we developed 13 brownstones. We also operate two homeless shelters, a multi-service center, and, and a food pantry. And we, we just finished a ANC project at 211 West 147th Street, where we closed in the end of, um, end of February, we closed it. And we are working through doing our end loans now that we're providing affordable um, housing home ownership. And all of our units are, the cost to the tenants are, are um, maximum is $103,000. So it's way below um, market price. And, and I actually have two, in loan closings on this project tomorrow morning. And we're working through some, you know, pandemic issues and and some applicants, you know, losing employment. But we do have two that's getting ready to close tomorrow morning, which is great news. That's that's my update. Thank you. So uh, any more people want to speak from the panel? That's it. Okay, so uh, before I invite my colleagues to ask questions, I want to ask a few questions first. Uh, this is mostly directed to Sarah from HPD or, or Christine. So can you explain the scope of the rehab work? So uh, what about the tenants? Uh, will they be relocated during renovation? Hi, this is Christine from ANCP. So the renovation work for all four properties is expected to be substantial, which means that all systems will be replaced. The roof, the heating, the, uh, the plumbing, um, the facade will be repaired, all new windows. Um, and so with that type of renovation, the residents will have to be relocated out of the building. Um, one of the reasons we selected West Harlem Group Assistance uh, is because they have that kind of experience with, reno uh, with renovating buildings substantially and moving tenants out for a period of time and returning them home. Um, the residents have been made aware of the requirement and West Harlem has been working with them prior to the pandemic to, to actually initiate relocation. Uh, we're on a pause right now, but we will, we will look to, to the um, reopening of the state in order to continue with relocation. Okay, so how long the renovation would approximately take? The typical timeline for renovation is 18 to 24 months. Uh, we say that because the work usually takes about 12 months and then we have to go through the approval process to get all the sign-offs. Okay, 
So I, I see these buildings entered the TIL program between 1997 and 2002. Why does it take so long for the buildings to graduate from TIL and convert to co-op ownership? Yeah, so the city of New York operated TIL development between 1978 and approximately 2006. Um, and so the buildings came into city ownership, they applied to TIL, became part of TIL, and then generally one by one, they were renovated and converted to co-op. These buildings, um, there were reasons why the buildings were not able to be renovated. Uh, it could have been financial reasons, it could have been um, compliance reasons. Um, and really from 2006 until 2016, not much happened with these buildings. ANCP is the program that took on the continuation of TIL development. And we are trying to work uh, to cluster the buildings like this cluster of four buildings in order to expedite the renovation and conversion to co-op. Okay. I understand that 24 vacant units will be marketed at 80% AMI. Uh, what kind of local marketing uh, efforts will be made? Who's going to do the marketing? Sure. Uh, what kind of marketing? Yeah. Um, I'll let uh, Donald Notice talk a little sure. bit about uh, who will do the marketing, but just to let you know, um, there are returning tenants to the cluster, which means that we cannot institute a community preference um, the community preference is met because residents are coming back. That said, there are a number of requirements under HPD marketing, like localized seminars, um, information seminars, um, localized advertising, and also connections with community partners that we hope will bring a lot of local applicants to, to the table. Um, Donald, do you wanna take over about specific marketing? Yeah, on, on the marketings, um, we, we, we normally use a third party vendor and Mike Reed was the one that we used on um, 211 West 147th Street. So we're looking to use Mike Reed on this project who, who understands the, um, how the marketing is done. They, he understands the Housing Connect and how we, you know, and, and we get, as Christina said, local participants to, 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 to um, put in applications. So it will be a third party vendor, but West Harlem would work closely with that marketing agent. Thank you. So um, I have no more questions. I now invite uh, my colleagues to ask questions. If you have questions for the panel, please click on the raise hand button on the participant panel. Council, are there any council members questions? Council member Miller has questions. Council member Miller. Thank you, Chair Poole. Um, how many units are, are we dealing with here in, uh, in this uh, West Holland project? There's a total of 60 units, 36 are occupied and 24 are vacant. And, and, and we anticipate that all 36 of the current residents will be returning? Yes. Okay, so that, then that would make its community preference or community uh, participation uh, over obviously over 50 percent there um is are there any other uh partners in, involved in this aside from uh, west harlem and hpd and the developer yeah so for every project that we work on we we have three other partners we have a private lender um, on this project, we will be working with the Community Preservation Corporation, which lends to uh, a lot of affordable housing projects with HPD. We will also work with um, a trainer. So during construction, all residents will be trained on home ownership and um, cooperative management. Uh, so that trainer is a partner. Um, and the last partner is Restoring Community, EFC. They are the owner during construction. So. Um, the buildings aren't renovated under city ownership. They're renovated uh, while the, the buildings are owned by our partner restoring communities. Okay, and, and, and the, the trainers are local uh, CBOs? Yes, so um, the trainers that we have worked with today are UHAB, uh, Urban Homesteading Assistance Board. And we've also worked with Northern Manhattan Improvement Corporation or NIMIC. 
to provide. Is that not a, is that not a function that, that West Harlem also performs? Is there a reason why they're, they're not doing that? No, that's not a function that our organization um, does on the home ownership. We do counsel, counsel them. We do do like um, budgeting and we have a financial literacy department. So we'll work with them on behalf of the financial literacy, first time home buyers and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. but we don't go into depth into all of the areas that HPD wants covered for the, for the potential homeowners. Okay, thank you. Um, nope, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any other council member questions? Chair Ku, I see no other council member questions. Okay, thank you. There being no more questions, uh, the panel is excused. Thank you. Council, thank you. Are, there, council are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 20, uh, LU 2274 Adam Clayton Power ANCP application? There are no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay, then. So if there are no members uh, uh, who want to participate in the public participation, uh, We will close. We will close uh, the here public hearing on P consider LU two zero two zero five four one four H A M the twenty two seventy four Adam Clayton Power A N C P uh, is now closed. That concludes today's business. Today's item is layover. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's item, you may submit it to land use testimony, one word, at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number on the project name in the subject heading. I would like to thank the applicants members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, and then you staff, and the sergeant at arms for participating in today's hearings. This meeting is hereby